Next joining Next Gumpas on the beat. I, I mean, I feel I mean, like I, my, my introduction won't do this man, man justice. <laughs> he is famous, he is famous for, uh, for uh, Lee Steinberg, uh, Steinberg agent, 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 to, agent the to the stars. I, I couldn't name all the stars. I don't have enough fingers to name all the the players that he's repped. Uh, but Lee, thank, thank you so much for joining the Compass. Thank you for jumping on. How are you doing? I'm doing great. My pleasure to be with you. Lee, is a little bit kind of a reunion for you when you walk around, you see a player you, maybe you, you used to be an agent for, a client, or maybe somebody you used to talk to back in the day. Is that kind of a reunion for you coming here? You uh, make a good point. It's like old homes week uh, because uh, this is my 48th draft. And so we're seeing current players, older players, people from teams, it's, it's like, uh, this is your life and, um, it's wonderful. Plus, uh, I grew up a Ram man and my dad took me to, uh, games in the Coliseum. We, we sat in like dollar fifty seats. So we were so far from the field, you would have needed a telescope to be able to identify the players, but I fell in love with football. And then in 1994, when the Rams were threatening to move, I thought it would be an awful thing for Orange County. And we um, put together the committee to save the Rams. And Jack Link had a Disneyland and I were co-hosts of it. And we fought really hard to keep them. We actually... Uh, won the first battle, which was a league meetings in 1994, um, where they voted down the move. But then a couple months later, they allowed him to go. And I thought it was an awful thing to take a team. that. W- My son came to me and said, Dad, how can they take the Rams? Is Disneyland next? Uh, Lee, it's funny. I was talking to Jackie Slater for a story. And he told me, uh, yeah, I used to have Maggie Johnson coming out to Anaheim, Anaheim State, and watch us play uh, football. So uh, it's crazy. That kind of tells you how popular the Rams are. Now they're kind of going through a period of making people fall in love with them again. Uh, but how's that been for you, seeing the fans reconnect with the Rams and also being at SoFi Stadium? That must be a nice place for you to check out. So I think that in Southern California, we like winning teams, and the Rams are that. We like whatever's hot and the Rams are that. We look stars, and they have stars. And here, the stadium's a star because it's the nicest stadium in the league. And so it really fits the taste of Southern California. And uh, I think it's unifying the whole area uh, in a way. And were they to win, I think it would greatly exponentially expand the fan base. Lee, obviously, you're you're a, 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 I mean, a superstar agent. You've been doing this for years. Uh, just when you got started in, in in the business, I mean, what what drove you to just keep on getting more and more and more and like getting more clients and helping more clients and just what was that like? All those years building up, and now you have an em- literally an empire. Uh, what, just can you talk about that journey that you went through? So I was a dorm counselor in an undergraduate dorm at UC Berkeley, and they moved the freshman football team into the dorm. And in 1975, the quarterback from that team, Steve Kowski, was the first pick in the first round of the NFL draft. And there really wasn't sports agentry at that point. Teams could just hang up the phone, and there was no right to representation. And and Mike Brown of the Bengals used to love to do this. He would just hang up the phone and say, we don't deal with agent. So, but he was the first pick, Bartkowski, in the first round. We got the largest rookie contract in NFL history. What kept me in it was seeing that athletes have the opportunity to retrace their roots and they can serve as role models. And really, I was looking for a way to make a difference in a positive way in the world. And so we asked that the athletes go to the high school community, set up a scholarship fund, go to the collegiate community where like Troy Aikman repaid the scholarship to UCLA. And at the pro level, set up a charitable foundation with the leading business figures, political figures, and um, community leaders that where work done, for example, put the 175th single mother and their family in the first home they'll ever own by making a down payment and outfitting it. So it's athletes changing lives. 
So that grew over time until we had 64 first round draft picks and the very first pick in the first round eight years um, in football, 12 players in the Hall of Fame. Now people like Patrick Mahomes and Tua Tongo by Loa. But um, and then baseball and basketball and and uh, boxing with Lennox I, Lewis. And you just it's like you have a cheat sheet to my questions, Lee. Talk about the tenth overall pick in 2017. Patrick has really revolutionized a lot. Um, obviously, signing the deal with Ketchup. Now I love Ketchup too, but I don't put it on my stake. <laughs> but can you just talk about Patrick and the impact that he's had in the NFL? So. What you have, if you like him on the field, you love him off the field because he's so grounded and steady and uh, w with a giving heart. So he has 15 homes foundation that helps you sports. But he's uh, someone with the most freakish arm I've ever seen. And I, one weekend I represent half the starting quarterbacks. And he's just freakishly gifted that way, but he's also really bright. And he's got what they call an eidetic memory, meaning that he can recall every event. So if he makes a mistake, he'll mark it and he won't go back that way. And so, and the minute he lost that game, he took two days off and went back to work. So he's, uh, uh, but I think you have this whole young set of quarterbacks, especially in the AFC, uh, with uh, Joe Burrow and, and Patrick and Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen and Justin Herbert that have really reloaded the league for a long time to come. Lee, just walking around, do you ever get on work mode when you see some you know, college prospects? Like, hey, that could be a client right there. We kind of turned off that switch. Well, with NILs now, the clients have uh, gotten so much younger. Uh, I'm used to talking to someone after uh, their junior year uh, or their senior year. But in reality now, if you don't spot the high school quarterback and sign him for NIL, you may never get the chance. Lee, when it comes to the NIL, what, why, why has it been such a game changer in your opinion? Because the NCAA moved too slow to help players that have need at the college level. And they could have uh, enhanced it. So you come from a disadvantaged family. You're living on scholarship. You're probably sending part of the scholarship uh, check home. And now your on athletic peers are living on a campus. And they can work during the school year to supplement their income. You can't. And so it was long overdue. And uh, it's had a revolutionary effect on college sports. It's not just male athletes, it's female athletes. It's uh, uh, somebody uh, from Nike, like Phil Knight, helping the entire Oregon uh, team. It's women athletes. Uh, Box gave stipends to 15 uh, athletes with the first name Jack. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so, and Sam's Club gave... Uh, uh, to the first to the 15 kids with name Sam. So it's taken a broad form and um, it's it the danger of it is that you would promote a player too heavily who really wasn't achieving on the field. Lee, uh, Ron, this question is for Gilbert. Gilbert, have you ever seen the movie Jerry Maguire? It's classic. Do you know who that who who Tom Cruise <laughs> followed? Follow, the famous, you know who he followed around? That guy right here in front of us. That guy right here. Lee, that moment about getting to work with Tom and, and doing all that and, and, and obviously with the movie and and how did you feel the adaptation was? Um, I thought it was good because it humanized sports agents in people's minds and you saw some of the caring that uh, goes into the relationship. So like Warren Moon and I were together 23 years and it's not just business. It, you come to really care. Uh, for people. Um, Cameron Crowe, the writer director, followed me around uh, and said, could I, could I just tag with you to do a, a film based on a sports agent? So he went to the league meetings with me in 1993, to the draft in 93. He uh, came to Pro Scouting Day at USC. He went to a number of events, spent time in my office, and I told him stories, lots and lots of stories. So 
Uh, then I was technical advisor, so I vetted the script to make sure the willing suspension of disbelief that holds you in a motion picture didn't get broke. You didn't think the dialogue was stilted. You didn't think the look was wrong. And then I took some of the actors like Cuba Gooding Jr. down to the Super Bowl in uh, Phoenix and made him pretend he was a wide receiver all week and hang out with Desmond Howard and hang out with Amani Toomer and pretend I was his agent. I actually had to show the quarterback in the film played by Jerry O'Connell how to throw a spiral because he had gone to NYU and they didn't have a football program. <laughs> so it's been 25 years now and I've rarely gone out to dinner or been in an airport where someone didn't run up and either ask me to say or say four words to them and start with show me the money. <laughs> I'm sure we weren't the first people to ask about that movie today, I'm sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> you get that all the time. Well, Lee, before we let you go, uh, what's something that you've been working on lately that maybe you want to let us know about? So we're having our Super Bowl party at Sony Studios on Saturday, and uh, we're holding a brain health summit because I couldn't stay in the business of representing athletes without trying to fight the concussion uh, battle and for prevention, awareness, and cure. We're also highlighting the Lantern Network, which helps uh, some inner city kids get business skills. Um, and we give humanitarian awards for things that um, Les Need of the Rams is getting one for community and charity work. And the Charger GM uh, uh, is also, Tom Telesco is also getting one. And uh, we also do, <coughs> agent academies to help young people who want to break into the field. And I'm trying to create a principled ethical uh, group that are the next professionals in, in, in the sport world. And so we do an agent academy. You can go to SteinbergSports.com and look it up. And we teach you how to negotiate and how to recruit clients and how to brand and market and a whole series of uh, skill sets that you need that's why i told you gilbert it's an empire he does it all lee thank you so much for joining the compass we truly appreciate it it's been my pleasure